Welcome back to Inside Politics. Our guest today is Congressman Marsha Blackburn. Congressman, a couple more questions about sure. Syria before we move on to some of the domestic issues. Um, obviously, uh, the, the Russians have been very involved over there. They've been a major ally of President Assad. Are you concerned about their, their reaction has been negative about this? Are you concerned that this is going to further complicate world politics, not just the politics of the Middle East? I, I think world politics are, are complicated, and the situation in the Middle East is indeed complicated. I think that bringing some leadership that is uh, going to be firm and resolute and uh, stand for um, for wiping out these terrorist related organizations is something that is going to send a message. Uh, you mentioned earlier we do have some special forces units inside Syria right now. Are you comfortable that what the president is doing doesn't expose them to further danger either from the Syrian forces or for that matter from the Russians who have both military uh, they have military equipment over there and they also have military advisors there that that is correct and I think that the the steps that were taken last night it does send the message that uh, we are not going to stand for the actions that Assad has taken. The Russians, of course, are not happy with that, um, but I think they probably got the message that we are going to continue to protect when we have people that are are there. We're going to continue to uh, push to protect them. Also, I think it's important to note that um, that this is going to have to be where it's not just us, but you're going to have. Uh, other countries that will join us and push for the removal of, of Assad. So you believe we'd be able to do something like that without the, nece the necessary use of ground troops in that area? Uh, I mean, that's you, you're sort of certain areas you can do missiles. That's exactly maybe right. Maybe you do planes, that is but right. then troops, that's a whole different And level. you know, we're, I'm not receiving any of the briefings. I am not in uh, D.C. right now. We have others that are there and are getting that brief, <laughs> those briefings in for me to speculate on uh, the information contained in them would be inappropriate. The Republicans now back in this country control both houses of Congress. They control the White House. It was thought quite a bit was going to get done in this first hundred days of President Trump. We're not quite to 100 days yet, but not a whole lot, at least legislatively, to look at in either house, and a lot of it because of the failure of the health care bill. What happened? Well, the health care bill is still in process. The speaker pulled together a group of us uh, week before last and said let's uh, continue to try to work with all parties involved and get a, a resolution to this and and we're doing that but the you Republicans know it didn't said work on that timeline that we had hoped uh, but we're we're making it a a better process and a better bill but during throughout the 2016 election the Republicans sure. said job one we get into Washington is going to be repeal Obamacare replace Obamacare they got there and it was the Republicans who could not decide among themselves what you're to right do. So you're right how, and how, where was the disconnect if you if, if that was job one how come there hadn't been those conversations had before those you conversations got to the have been taking place as a matter of fact you can go back to February 2010 with the Blair House health care summit where the president uh, invited Democrats and Republicans to come and bring their ideas on health reform. I was one of the 10 Republicans invited. We accepted the president's invitation. We laid out uh, patient-centered health care. Our colleagues across the aisle, the Democrats, laid out a government-controlled health care. They went with their approach. I think the only couple of ideas they took from us were pre-existing conditions and coverage of children who were still in school. Our ideas have been there. How they come together and how you phase out Obamacare and get it off the books with the way the tentacles have spread and the 20,000 pages of regulations, yes. Well, you millions know. of people who have coverage now. Well, that, that is right. There are 9 million people, and 4.8 million of those individuals are in the Obamacare exchange because they lost their health insurance that they had been told by the president they would be able to keep, your and group, they lost it. Your group is talking about how to make it work 
President Trump has taken to Twitter several times to attack the Freedom Caucus, the, yeah. the conservative group in the House that did not go along with this. Is that a good strategy? Is telling people that they did something wrong now, now shape up going to really make a difference? I, w I would like to see the President tweet about the good things that we are doing because we've passed a lot of legislation in the House and we've rolled back a lot of regulations that are having an adverse impact on our constituents and on jobs and the economy so we have we've gotten quite a bit done and we're going to continue to work on those things do you wish the president didn't tweet quite as much it does seem he's cut back a bit to me over the last couple of weeks and months but you're constantly being asked to have to defend what he says and I'm sure you don't have any idea what he's going to say until you read it like everybody else and that can get to be a little annoying sometimes there it? are always things that the president is going to be tweeting I have no doubt I just uh, want to put more of that focus on the on the legislation that we're bringing forward and the things that we're getting done in terms of what's happening happened with the health care bill is the president learning that the art of the deal in business is one thing the art of passing legislation in Congress is a completely different animal and he has to tell us to learn that I think he's probably a little bit surprised and a little bit disappointed because the pace should have been faster uh, the house uh, I would have loved for us to finish the bill we're very close and I think within uh, a couple of days of going back you will see us with the bill back on the floor. We uh, came to an agreement on risk pools and that amendment was added to the bill uh, just as we left DC on Thursday. So um, my legislation or my amendment that would halt us uh, and put a block in to keep states from adding to the Medicaid expansion. That was accepted onto the bill. The pro-life language to um, put a one-year moratorium on big abortion providers. That language is in the bill. We clarified the language around illegal aliens and their access of health care. I got that clarification done. We have two members who had worked, one on um, doing block grants back to the states for health care, another on work requirements. All of that has been added to the bill. It makes it a better bill cuts a trillion dollars in taxes, it yields an $800 billion savings in Medicaid, puts $15 billion into state innovation grants where you can look at things like healthcare informatics and interoperability and uh, some of the great innovation being done here in Middle Tennessee and actually get down the cost of health delivery. Congressman Roger Blackburn's our guest on Inside Politics. We've been talking about health care in Syria. Back to talk about some more topics after this break.